Hey trucked up guys and gals, I am so excited about this video because there's a lot of truck folk out there who just, they're not interested in getting an EV truck because it just doesn't work for them. I can see in many of these cases that an EV truck just does not make sense, but everything is changing and it's changing fast and you all have a front row seat to what's right around the corner. In this video, we're going to identify a major technological advancement for the EV truck that almost overnight could lead to market dominance in the pickup truck space. I know you might think that's crazy, but it's not. The best part is that this is already possible and it's coming, which means that here at Trucked Up EVs, I can't even contain my enthusiasm <laughs> for being a part of this change as it evolves. So let's get trucked up and get into the details. You love trucks, all trucks, you haul and tow, Snow wheel and off road. Take the kiddies to softball practice and your sweetie to lover's lookout. Mm. This channel is all about how the truck is changing, but not the lifestyle. We're loaded up, kitted out, and ready to roam. That's a fact. But are we ready for the future? Welcome to Trucked Up EVs. It seems like a complete no brainer and an easy answer to simply say, <sighs> Guy, fix the batteries, man, and, and, and we're done. But there's so much more to unpack, and I'll bet you're not familiar with at least some of the changes or how earth-shaking these developments really are. We're talking about every FUD all-star being addressed here that every EV skeptic has come out with. Range, reliability, costs, battery replacement price, hot and cold charging losses, low resale value, higher insurance costs, all tied to this one thing and all about to be solved. First, let's talk about what's going on right now and how this alone is cause for excitement and then we'll get into the weeds and some truly mind-bending numbers. <laughs> also, there is new breakthrough tech that solves one of the biggest hangups to EVs, so stick around to the end for that bonus. We've all heard about range anxiety and the challenges of towing and hauling anything long distance with an EV truck. And it's all correct. And even some legacy autos short-term band-aids are already out there to try and shore up these real world challenges. I just did a video last week on the Ram Charger, a series hybrid that uses gasoline to bridge the gap when the electric range doesn't cut it. It's supposed to be out sometime in 2025. But what if all of that was completely obsolete already. What if you go out in 2025 when it comes to market and you spend, I don't know, a hundred grand on a spanking new truck that is out of date and irrelevant by the time you pull up your driveway? What if we're on the cusp of range anxiety, no longer being a part of the EV conversation? I, I can hear it, you're going, he's a Kool-Aid drinking fanboy, a complete idiot. Well, yeah, sure, okay, that's what all my friends say too. But that's besides the point. Think about what's happening already. Batteries are improving at the same exponential rate we saw in solar power cells. Solar was expensive, unreliable, somewhat inefficient even in full sun, but especially in overcast and partly cloudy skies. And the panels didn't last very long, and there was no way to effectively store excess energy in an efficient way. Fast forward a single decade, and the world has changed. None of the tropes and FUD surrounding solar stand up anymore. None of it. According to Sage Energy, one watt of solar panel cost $8.77 US a decade ago. In 2023, that was $2.77. Efficiency in 1992 was celebrated when it surpassed 15%. Now, researchers have gone so far as to achieve 47%, but most commercial panels today are between 22 and 25%, and their lifespans are no longer measured in years, but decades. Lithium-ion batteries are doing the same thing, only faster. I I'm not even going to discuss you know, speculative developments like alternative experimental battery chemistries or solid-state stuff, because as of today, we don't have a consumer-available solid-state EV vehicle on the market. If we did, well, then I'd have to make a marathon video here. So I'll just serve the main dish and save dessert for a later video. But when we look at what is happening today, it becomes apparent that profound change is approaching in the next year or two, if not mere months. The three key factors that decide everything, of course, are battery cost, 
density and cycle life. First, let's talk cost. According to Statista, batteries cost $780 US per kilowatt hour in 2013, which by mid-2023, a decade later, had plummeted to 139 US dollars. It would even fall in more dramatically had it not been for the supply chain nightmare and slowdown triggered by, you know, the global COVID lockdowns and all of that. That's a crazy drop, but it gets better. According to a September 2023 article by The Independent, reporting on the findings of energy analytics firm Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, the price of lithium ion batteries just passed the magical tipping point of one hundred dollars per kilowatt hour. Why is this so important? It's big. It's considered the tipping point at which EV vehicle costs will have parity with gasoline vehicles. That's right now. That's today. Oh, but I'm not done. In August, the price dropped a whopping 33% since March of 2022 and a further 8.7% month over month. This is huge news. That's an over 80% price free fall in a single decade. And we're seeing it translated already in EV prices. Many are already equal to their gas counterparts, such as Mustang Mach-E, Volkswagen ID4, Tesla Model 3, Model Y, Chevy Bolt, and others. Also, not only is production now so robust that many have had to scale back until the growing demand meets the output, the costs of raw materials have dropped substantially. The idea of an electric truck costing more than a gasoline truck is already coming to an end. We'll see that on dealer lots within the next 24 to 36 months at most in my view. You can quote me on it. You can hold me to the fire in 24 to 36 months. Take into consideration that South Korea and China just entered the EV truck space. What's even more amazing is how the next two factors with batteries will drive that down even further all while solving the greatest challenge EVs face in the minds of so many consumers, and that's range. Here's where battery density comes into play. Although less dramatic on the surface, it has uh, mass implications. For the love of everything decent, just stop with the puns, man. Since being first commercialized by Sony in 1991, lithium ion batteries have improved their density from 80 watt hours per kilogram to 300 watt hours per kilogram. That means that for the same weight, a vehicle can technically hold four times the amount of energy as the original. That's like drinking four times more beer without needing to go to the bathroom. Okay, it's a bad analogy. I gotta pee. Okay, I'm back. Ah, uh, just had to change my depends. Anyway, it gets better. According to Physics World, back in April of 2023, researchers managed to create lithium batteries with a record-breaking energy density, listen to this one, of over 700 watt-hours per kilogram, 80 to 300 to 700. That's mental. If that number could be commercialized, kiss aviation fuel goodbye. This packs so much energy per kilogram that even transatlantic airlines could go fully electric, never mind a pickup truck. Even aviation skeptics back in 2021 said that a leap in battery density would be needed and far off. And then they cited a number of 480 watt hours per kilogram as a starting point, not 700 watt hours per kilogram. That's how far we've come. This technology it's here now. How long until it makes it to market? Well, Tesla has already improved its 4680 battery density by almost 15% since launching the Cybertruck you know, four months ago. How's that for speed? Let's put it in a trucked up perspective, shall we? And we'll use the F-150 Lightning, the truck that I drive. Of course, I have the standard range. We're gonna use the extended range. So we're gonna use 820 kilograms or 1,800 pounds as a benchmark weight. That would equate out to 574 kilowatt hours rather than the 131 kilowatt hours in the extended range F-150 Lightning, which currently gets an EPA range of 515 kilometers or 320 miles. Are you sitting down for this? Based on all things being equal, that new density would result in a range of 1,400 miles or 2,253 kilometers. That's absolutely bonkers and very hard to imagine. And cost alone for such a new tech would make such a number unrealistic for the next few years at least. But what I'm getting at here 
is even with reasonable costs and ramping up production factored in at half that rate, manufacturers could have the number of batteries they have to put in the truck which would lower the weight equally and still double the range. Now keep in mind, as you lower the weight, your range also improves, so you'd get an added bonus. If this comes about, an EV truck will rapidly outrange the most thrifty of internal combustion engine trucks and be lighter, more nimble, and far more capable. But we're still not done yet because the next one I'm bringing here is even juicier and that's battery cycles. Sounds boring, but oh no, no, no. In everyday terms, we're talking about battery lifespan. Big concern for people buying an EV. Although I said I wouldn't talk about experimental battery chemistry, I don't need to. The biggest changes are already being seen in the available ones on the market, including the 2024 F-150 Lightning. We've all heard the horror stories about cobalt, right? And these rare earth minerals even though much higher concentrations per weight are found in a laptop or smartphone, the ones that we're currently using, or even the desulfuring process for gasoline, but I, I, I digress. Many batteries have switched entirely to LFP, or lithium iron phosphate batteries, all ingredients we have in cheap abundance. Yes, contrary to the FUD chuckers, lithium is everywhere, salt for crying out loud, and we have heaps of it. In fact, one extinct volcano in the United States alone has been found to contain all the global lithium requirements needed for the next several decades of growth. Yes. Now, these batteries are less dense than the ones with cobalt and nickel, but unlike those can be charged continually to 100% all the time without the long-term degradation we sometimes see in the other chemistries. But none of this includes the changes that I've discussed already. Even better, they don't have the risks associated with fires, even though that's already much lower than gasoline by eight times. Furthermore, they have longer life as far as the number of cycles they can survive from empty to full. However, I'm just scratching the surface with LFP because of something even bigger. New techniques are already getting many chemistries to far outlast a million miles or 1.6 million kilometers before the battery degrades below 80% in efficiency. In fact, research from Dalhousie University here in Canada, headed by Professor Jeff Don, who is also a world-renowned battery scientist, stated as far back as March of 2022 that the newest iteration of the NMC battery has been running steadily at 40 degrees Celsius, that's freaking hot, for over four and a half years continuously through countless charging cycles with less than 5% battery degradation, meaning that when put into commercial use, you'd be looking at achieving 10,000 cycles, or an average 4 million miles, or 6.4 million kilometers, basically driving one vehicle for your entire life. If this holds true, EV trucks will become far longer lasting than internal combustion engine trucks with better range and increased towing and hauling abilities, all while dropping in price and allowing manufacturers to make equal or better profit margins. Oh, but you forgot one thing. At the very beginning, I mentioned a bonus. This really throws a wrench into a lot of the FUD because guys who are using trucks in adverse conditions have this one big hang up before they'll ever think about buying an electric truck. This gem finally eliminates the biggest anti-EV sentiment in 2023 after heat waves, heat sinks, polar vortices, atmospheric rivers, pineapple expresses, and weather just short of the freaking apocalypse scared the crap out of all of us. What if your truck could match the range of an internal combustion truck in the coldest winter? Well, the previously mentioned LFP batteries, you know, they already perform much better in colder temperatures and also charge faster when the mercury goes below freezing. There's something truly spectacular underway that might make EV trucks not only more reliable and easier to start in a deep freeze, but excluding all the tech incorporated above could alone put lithium-ion batteries on equal footing with winter gasoline range. Scientists at Argonne National Lab and Berkeley Lab and funded by the DOE Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Vehicle Technologies Office, <sighs> have addressed the freezing effect on the carbonate solvent electrolytes 
That's what's causing the problems inside the battery. The main reason for the drop in charging speed, efficiency, and movement of lithium ions that is needed to create energy. They did this by introducing a type of antifreeze electrolyte that operate as if at room temperature. Although research is ongoing, the batteries seem to degrade at a comparable rate to standard electrolyte batteries, and it also comes with a huge bonus, similar to that in LFB batteries. This antifreeze is not flammable, and therefore not susceptible to fires. Basically, we are at a turning point on multiple fronts, and the future is not only looking bright for electric truck and EVs in general, but much closer than even the most optimistic had forecast. I'd like to say at this time that I am working day and night to get this channel to a thousand subscribers. To all of you who have already subscribed, thank you so much for making a huge difference already. Please like and subscribe and click that bell notification icon because there is so much more amazing trucked up content already in the works. Thanks for watching.